What is the most tragic announcement that was made at your high school? There's a moment that changes everything. A moment when the air around you shifts, your perspective sharpens, and your world will never be the same again. For my high school, that moment came on a cold November morning, in the middle of what should have been an ordinary day. The day the announcement came over the loudspeakers, echoing down the hallways, changing all of us forever. I don't think any of us knew how much that day would haunt us, or how we'd come together in the wake of one of the darkest moments our school had ever experienced. It started like any other Monday morning. I was a junior, dragging myself through the usual routine of getting dressed and racing to catch the bus. The leaves outside were already losing their brilliant colors, leaving bare branches swaying in the chill of the approaching winter. As the bus pulled into the parking lot, I noticed a strange, tense energy in the air, but I couldn't quite put my finger on it. I shrugged it off, figuring it was just Monday blues. Homeroom was the same as always, students chatting quietly, some still half asleep, others frantically finishing homework they hadn't done over the weekend. Our teacher, Mrs. Miller, was seated at her desk, scrolling through her emails like she did every morning. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary until a crackle came over the loudspeaker. That's when the silence fell. Principal Davis's voice echoed through the room, calm but with an undercurrent of something heavy, something that immediately made my stomach twist. Good morning, students and staff. I'm afraid I have some very difficult news to share with you all. I need everyone to listen closely. There will be counselors available throughout the day, and I encourage anyone who needs support to seek help. My heart dropped into my stomach, and I could feel the energy in the room shift. All eyes were on the loudspeaker now, waiting for the bombshell that was about to drop. We all knew it wasn't going to be good. You don't get an announcement like that for something trivial. Principal Davis took a deep breath before he continued, and when he did, his voice was thick with emotion. I regret to inform you that we've lost one of our own. Early this morning, we received the devastating news that one of our senior students, Amanda Richardson, has passed away in a tragic accident. The words hit like a freight train. Amanda Richardson? It didn't make sense. She was one of the brightest, most popular students in the entire school. Captain of the volleyball team, honor roll student, and someone who always had a smile on her face. Everyone knew her, or at least thought they did. How could someone so full of life be gone just like that? There was a collective gasp in the room, followed by whispers that spread like wildfire. Mrs. Miller, who had been composed just moments before, suddenly looked like she might break down at any second. Her eyes were glassy, her lips pressed into a thin line as she struggled to keep herself together. Principal Davis's voice broke through the murmurs. Amanda was involved in a car accident last night. We don't have all the details yet, but what we do know is that the vehicle she was in collided with a tree. The circumstances are still under investigation. I could barely process what he was saying. Amanda Richardson was dead? Just like that? My mind was spinning, trying to make sense of it, but there was no making sense of it. One minute, she had been here, walking the halls like the rest of us, and now, she was just gone. Principal Davis continued, I know this is difficult news, and we're all grieving together. Please remember that you are not alone. If you need to talk, our counselors are here to support you. The announcement ended, but the weight of his words lingered in the air. The silence in the room was deafening. Some students started crying quietly, others just sat there, stunned, staring at the floor as if trying to comprehend what had just happened. I couldn't move. I couldn't think. My mind was frozen, stuck on the image of Amanda's smiling face, the one I had seen so many times in the yearbook, on the volleyball court, in the hallways. How was it possible that someone so vibrant, so full of energy, could just be gone? Homeroom ended, but none of us left the room. Mrs. Miller told us we could stay as long as we needed, that we didn't have to go to our next class if we weren't ready. No one moved. We were all trapped in the same state of shock, as if the world had stopped turning for just a little while. The hours that followed were a blur. There were no lessons that day, no tests, no homework. The school had become a quiet, grieving space, where students wandered the halls in disbelief, huddled in small groups, whispering about what had happened, trying to make sense of the senseless. Rumors started circulating almost immediately. Some people said Amanda had been driving drunk, others said she had been texting while driving, and there were even whispers that she had been racing with friends. No one knew the truth, and maybe it didn't matter. All that mattered was that she was gone. I found myself walking toward the gym, where they had set up a makeshift memorial for Amanda. Her volleyball jersey was laid out on a table, surrounded by flowers, candles, and framed photos of her laughing, playing volleyball, and hanging out with friends. It was surreal, seeing her face there, knowing that she would never walk those halls again, never play another game, never laugh with her friends. I stood there for what felt like hours, staring at the memorial, trying to feel something, anything, but I was numb. It didn't seem real. It couldn't be real. Over the next few days, the school was a shadow of itself. Classes resumed, but no one was really paying attention. The halls were quieter than usual, and every now and then, you'd hear someone crying softly in the bathroom or in a corner of the cafeteria. The counselors were busy nonstop, talking to students who were struggling to cope with the loss. Amanda's death became the only topic of conversation. Everyone wanted to know the details of the accident, to understand how something like this could have happened. But the more we learned, the more tragic the story became. It turned out Amanda wasn't alone in the car that night. She had been with her best friend, Emily, who had survived the crash but was in critical condition. The two of them had been on their way home from a party, and although the toxicology reports came back clear, no alcohol or drugs in Amanda's system, the police believed that she had been speeding. The car had swerved off the road, hit a patch of ice, and slammed into a tree. Amanda had died on impact. The news about Emily only added to the heartbreak. 
She was in the ICU, fighting for her life, and no one knew if she would pull through. The thought of losing two students in one accident was too much to bear. The following week, the school held a memorial service for Amanda. It was one of the most emotional experiences I've ever had. The entire student body gathered in the auditorium, along with teachers, staff, and Amanda's family. Her parents sat in the front row, their faces pale and hollow, as if all the life had been drained from them. One by one, students and teachers stood up to speak, sharing their memories of Amanda. Some talked about her leadership on the volleyball team, others about her kindness, her sense of humor, her infectious laugh. Her best friend, Emily's younger sister, spoke about how Amanda had been like a second sister to her, always there to give advice or lend a hand. As she spoke, the entire room was filled with the sound of quiet sobs. By the time the service ended, there wasn't a dry eye in the room. We all filed out in silence, each of us carrying the weight of Amanda's loss with us. But the tragedy didn't end there. A few weeks later, we got the news that Emily had passed away. She had fought hard, but her injuries were too severe, and her body couldn't hold on any longer. The school was plunged into mourning once again. Two lives, taken too soon, in the blink of an eye. The deaths of Amanda and Emily left a permanent scar on our school. They were a reminder of how fragile life is, how quickly everything can change. In the months that followed, the administration cracked down on speeding in the school parking lot, and they implemented new programs to teach students about the dangers of reckless driving. But no amount of rules or programs could bring back the two girls we had lost. As the years went by, Amanda and Emily's memory lived on. Their jerseys were retired, their lockers were left untouched, and each year on the anniversary of their deaths, the school held a moment of silence to honor them. Even after I graduated and moved on, I never forgot that day, the day when the most tragic announcement was made at my high school. It was a day that changed all of us. A day that reminded us that life is fragile, and that sometimes, no matter how bright a person's future seems, it can all be taken away in an instant. And although we eventually moved forward, the memory of Amanda and Emily remained with us, a permanent reminder of the tragedy that rocked our school and the lives that were lost too soon.